Society of Amranthine Educators of Happy Valley Business School presents Talks on Business Essentials. We talk what we know, we know what we talk. Knowledge is cumulative, let us acquire. Hello all, Baba Black Sheep, Happy Valley Wood. Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for my master and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Well, accounting just turns so elementary. If the master in this rhyme wanted to know what resources he had at his disposal and what he owed, he would be preparing a statement called the balance sheet, which would help him know is the business in a pink of its head. I begin this video with a question, which is the most widely circulated piece of literature that's least read in the world? Hold your guesses. That's the annual report of the companies that we've invested in. Most of us are left staring at reams of paper along with numbers, tables and graphs. And though we know they are important for investment decisions, we are not sure what they mean. These statements help us understand if the firm is in the pink of its head. And for every business, we need to examine three financial statements. One, the balance sheet. Two, the income statement. And three, the statement of cash flows. Let's begin with the balance sheet. When we examine a balance sheet, we seek answers to three questions. One, how valuable are the assets of the firm? Two, how did the firm finance these assets? Did they use owner's money called capital or outsider's money called debt or a mix of both? And three, how much risk is embedded in the assets? What you see on the screen is the balance sheet, a simplified version of the balance sheet where the assets and liabilities are managed. Assets are what the firm owns. These include long-lived assets or fixed assets, investment in securities, intangibles such as copyrights, trademarks, licenses, patents, and the firm's goodwill, and the short-term assets like the firm's cash in hand, cash in bank, inventory, and so forth. Liabilities are the ones that bring money to the firm that can be used to purchase the assets, and they primarily come in the form of equity or debt and they represent what a firm owes to the owners and to the others. When the total liabilities are deducted from the total assets, we get the firm's net worth known as the shareholder's equity. When analyzing assets or liabilities, three points are of importance. First, what is the type of the asset or liability? Second, what is the value of the asset or liability? And third, what is the uncertainty about the value stated? Remember, a balance sheet does a fantastic job of categorizing assets and liabilities, a frail job of assessing their values and a freaky job of reporting uncertainty about the values. So what are the steps in reading assets? Step 1 is called the triple filter test. Apply the triple filter test to understand if an asset is truly an asset. To be an asset, the item must satisfy three criteria. One, probable usage in future. Two, future economic benefits and three, control. For example, if we own the black sheep, it would be an asset if it were probable that it would live another year and we could share its wool and sell this to customers and we had control over the sheep as the owner. If the sheep were dead, there would be no asset, nor would there be any income by way of sharing of wool. Step 2. Asset measurement and value. The accounting view of asset value is to a great extent based on historical cost, that is, the cost at which the asset was first acquired, also called its book value. However, let's not forget that these assets do have market values that may be quite different from their book values. Also, different assets are measured differently. Fixed assets adjusted for depreciation and the choice of depreciation methods, inventory and the choice of inventory valuation methods and value of investments. The value stated on the balance sheet is asked on a particular date. This value may be quite different from what is stated on the day we were reading it. Let's take up our second question, measuring the financing mix. The second set of question we would ask is to shed some light on the liability side of the balance sheet. What is the mixture of debt and equity used by the firm? A similar triple filter test applies. The liability must be expected to lead to a future cash outflow. The firm cannot avoid the obligation and the transaction giving rise to the obligation has happened already. Now moving over to the third question about measuring risk. How risky are the investments the firm has made? How risky are the assets? How much risk do equity investors face? 
Accounting statements do not really claim to measure or quantify risk in a systematic way other than to provide footnotes and disclosures where there might be risk embedded in the firm. Accounting measures of risk are broadly categorized into two groups. The first is the disclosure about potential obligations or losses and values that show up as footnotes on the balance sheet, which are designed to alert potential or current investors to the possibility of significant losses. The second is the ratios that are designed to measure both liquidity and default risk. Reading a balance sheet is important. Businesses with strong balance sheets are more likely to survive economic downturns and be ready to thrive when the going gets good again. A strong balance sheet possesses the following attributes. Intelligent working capital, positive cash flows, balanced capital structure and income generating assets. Intelligent working capital. When we read a balance sheet, watching the differences between the current assets and current liabilities reveals tales of the firm having either too much liquidity or compromising on its profitability. Positive cash flows. Cash is the oxygen of business. Looking for signs that business maintains minimum cash reserves for the rainy day will help us understand how well the business is doing. Balanced capital structure. A strong balance sheet employs a balanced mix of debt and equity. Debt in many cases is a cheap source of financing, interest is deductible. However, debt always poses risk. It can be rewarding during good times but may turn nasty when there is a downturn. Equity financing is expensive but less risky. Having an idea of the debt equity mix will be helpful. And fourth, the income generating assets. Assets should be reviewed regularly and the firm must be investing in those assets that are performing. A solid understanding of the balance sheet helps us make the right decisions. If we are investors in a firm that has a fragile balance sheet, then we know we have a problem on hand. Happy viewing. Stay accounted for success. Thank you.